Three, two, one, watch the screen. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in, check it out. We're gonna be reviewing the Rock Pals portable power station. This is a 500 watt, so we're gonna see what this thing can handle, what it's all about. Also got me a solar panel here to test, so I'm gonna be unboxing everything, showing you how it is out of the box and what it all includes, and then we'll take it out in the sun, nice sunny day, set up the solar panel, go ahead and see what kind of input wattage we can get from the solar panel, see how long this takes to charge. As you can see, I do have some uh, appliances here, so I do wanna see, I like to test these things and see just how much power they can draw. We're gonna test it all out, so stay tuned and let's get started with this review. Driving tour, photography, fishing, camping, power outage, emergencies. Of course, emergencies are always one of them. Uh, on the back of the box, it just kind of has a little diagram of all the ports, some information here. Depending on the power output, I mean, you know, they like to put all these things it can do, but really it all depends on how much power these things can output and how long they last, right? So anyway, opening the box up for the first time with you. And on the top, we got a little accessory bag. Let's just open them as we go. Lighter adapter, cool. So you can charge it from your car lighter adapter. A little power brick to charge it from home. And just a little home wall socket where the figure eight adapter goes into the power brick. So wall and into the power station there. We got our warranty card, manual, quick start guide, just basically shows you how to charge it and connect everything up, which I'll show you in a sec. Going down a little layer here, and there is the unit, cool. So pretty well packaged. We just have some plastic wrap on it. I like how it's kind of rugged looking. Very compact, this thing is very light, so it's probably gonna not last that long for higher power stuff, but it says it can do 500 watts. I do like how it's very protected. See all this plastic surround? There's our fan ports, cooling ports. Very well protected. These aren't even ports, these are just for looks here on the bottom. Uh, it's even got a little feet protectors, so there is some uh, protection tape on the feet. These are those rubber feet so it's not going to slip around a lot and on the other side same thing just cooling ports on the top and the bottom there's our display I'm gonna go ahead and take off this protector of course you can leave this on if you want to i'm just going to take it off and let's see what we got here so power button quick press does pretty much nothing press and hold we have our power on Notice the screen is not very bright. It doesn't look like it's color. It's just your basic LCD screen. They sent it to me with 67% charge. If we hit display here, all that's doing is taking on and off the battery percentage. All right, so our DC in section up here, so that's gonna be never exceed 24 volt, okay? So if you have solar panels that are higher than 24 volt, or anything else you're plugging in. This is our whole DC rail, right? And then this is our whole AC rail. I like how they have them separated really conveniently. And then you just push the button here to activate each. It looks like this thing is gonna auto turn off if there is no activity. So you're gonna have to press and hold to turn that on again. If I press DC rail, you see how we get a little LED light there. Press the AC rail. Is that gonna come on? Let's try press and hold. Yeah, it looks like you gotta press and hold. I'm noticing the power LED is not working on this. So I don't know if that's a defect or what, but um, I would think that you would get a little green LED in there too. Finishing up our DC, we have DC out 12 volt and another 12 volt, so two 12 volt outs. We got two AC outputs. These are the, one, the big boys that are gonna do the 500 watts, kind of a hard plastic cover at least to protect it a bit. So as you can see, just two US plug uh, AC outputs. Some of them have universal plugs, which are pretty cool. This one doesn't look like it does. Two USB-A 5 volt 3.1 amp, and then one USB-A QC 3.0. So this just does a higher output. 
and then it has one USB-C 45 watt output. So this is a high power connection. And that's really all there is to it, guys. So nothing major going on here. Let me go ahead and turn all of these off. Looks like the DC just needs a quick press, but every time you want to turn off around the AC, you have to press and hold. Okay, just to let you know that. And then let's see if we quick press the power. Nope. So press and hold for power off, and there we go. 100 watt solar panel. So it's just kind of telling you how to connect it. So let's flip this over and let's see what we get in the little pouch. Okay. So a nice basic solar panel. It's, you know, black and basic, kind of a denim material. Okay, here we go. So we have our solar panel connections. All right, cool. Uh, we have a rail, neat. So adapter rail that comes inside. This is our output. So you can see in there we have our output connection. And then this is kind of a bonus. We have a little um, box here that's got our USB, looks like 3.1, and then the regular USBs for low and high power USB charging. If you don't even want to connect to this, you want to just connect to that, you can charge up to three items. So the only output is this, and this is how this is going to work, guys. These are your basic solar panel connections. You can't really get these wrong because it's just two different types of connectors. So you just want to plug them in, of course, until they click, right? There we go. So those are both in there. And then this, when you're ready to charge it on your solar panel, you just DC in right there, okay? Just like that. All right, guys, I got out here on the patio and I just got a great spot for the sun right there. What I did notice is this little panel doesn't have any legs, right? Any like, fold out legs to prop it up at an angle. So you're kind of at the mercy of the surfaces around you, which is kind of unfortunate. I do like to see these things come with, you know, most panels like this have these little Velcro flaps that you can pull down that act as little um, legs to get certain angles into the sun. So really right here, I'm just gonna kind of have to just lay it, you know, right here on the, on the uh, gravel here. So anywho, that's, that's what's happening. Remember a DC in is what we want to plug into. So we just plug right in. Let's see if it powers up and recognizes it. Yep. Like I was saying, a little negative, that screen's really dim. So you got to look at it in the shade. Input 67 Watts. Now I'm seeing this power go red. So it's like when you power it up normally, um, you don't have a light, but when you're inputting power, it looks like that light on the power is red now. So just to let you know, that's a little indicator. Let's give it an hour. It looks like the most we're getting out of these panels is 67 watts. Okay, so would have really liked to see the feet on these panels so you could prop it up at different angles because this is not the optimal angle. If it was up like another 45 degrees or so, 30 degrees, that would have been perfect for the sun. Let's give it an hour, come back and see how much it's charged. I'm hearing that fan kick on, so it's cooling it while it's charging. All right guys, let's see how this little Rock Pals is doing. Uh, just a little over an hour, about an hour and three minutes. Shade has just started to get over that first panel there. You can see that just that first little inch or so, it was 67. I just checked it a couple minutes ago. Now it's down to 60 watts. So any kind of shade or clouds are really going to influence your solar panels. But check out our charge state. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it says 79%. Just hit 80%. So we started at 67% on the battery. And within that hour, we made it up to 80%. I do want to plug it in just to the power, the house power real quick, the 110 and see how fast it charges it versus the solar panels. Anyway, I always like to just do a quick little, uh, fold up of the panels just to show you guys how simple it is to put them away when you're done camping or whatever of course you don't want to have like any rubbish on the panels right so just make sure they're nice and clean try to get all the dust and dirt off you can and uh and then we just kind of fold them up roll them on up it is unfortunate these ones don't have 
any legs because that would have I think we would have been able to charge faster if we had those little stands you can you can uh, put out which most of these have so rock pals if you're listening go ahead and put those velcro legs up on these things try to do this as quickly as possible sorry guys I just want to show kind of in real time Remember, you do have those ports over here too, those three USB ports that you can charge stuff off of the panels as well. Remember we are getting about 67 watts or so from those solar panels. That's the, kind of the maximum we could get. Plug it into the DC in. And let's see what happens. We get the, everything lights up here and we are getting Man, it's like 67 watts is the maximum input this little thing can take. Okay guys, now that we know that this thing can do out there and charge with the solar panels, let's get it in here, power this bad boy on, and uh, just really see what it can kind of handle, you know what I mean? I have all these devices here, drone, cameras, iPad, phone, appliances that draw more power and see if this thing can handle it. So. First thing I always like to do is just see the maximum this thing can handle. I think this thing can run the 450 watt blender, right? So if the prime example, you want to make margaritas on your camping trip or whatever. Um, heating elements on these smaller ones are difficult, like boiling water or heating toast. We're also going to try this too because one side can do about 600 watts and that we'll see if that thing trips. but. Let's just try the blender first, see if it can handle it. So I have the blender on high and we're gonna do ice crush maximum. And let's see if it works. Three, two, one, watch the screen. 482. Yep, so it seemed like 482, it peaked out at 482 crushing that ice. As you can see, we have a nice slushy here in the blender. Um, so if you ever wanted to go camping and bring a blender, there you go. You can make some margaritas. It did handle a blender, no problem. Was close to the 500 watts. So let's unplug this blender. Now I wanna try this toaster. Now this toaster is a four slot dual toaster, right? So it can do four of them. I'm just gonna run it on one toaster and it seems to want to draw like around 600 high fives to six in some other devices I've tested. So let's just try it. If I trip down one of these slots right here, let's see what goes on all the way down and let's watch it. Fan kicked on hardcore. It's trying to do it. Output 592, 590. Let's see if this thing trips. Let's see what it does. Kind of surprised so far, wow. Some of the other power stations I test would have tripped by now. And that thing is getting hot. So it's maintaining at 590. I don't know how long it's gonna maintain for. That fan really has kicked on. I'm gonna move this toaster a little bit out of the way so it can cool itself. Okay, well, this is impressive. It does smell like some plastic. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully this thing has a good enough um, shut off circuit, overload circuit that it will shut off. But that toaster, yeah, that's going to be cooking some toast if you want to. And you can watch the power draw there. We're outputting at 585, 583, the 590-ish. That's gonna drain your power pretty dang quick. But it's outperforming its rating and that's kind of what you wanna see. Like if you get in these situations where um, you wanna try to use something that's over its rated, sometimes they work, man. And it looks like this is handling it. So I'm just gonna let this toaster do its thing. You know, I have it set like the, you know, these knobs right here, I have it set all the way to the max. So it's going to toast that into like burnt toast if there was toast in there. So this is impressive. I just tested another power station 
that had the same wattage rating at 500 and it did not it would it would kick on the toaster for about 10 seconds and then it would trip the entire thing so they're understating and overperforming on the rock pals it seems like okay as far as the the draw that's very very impressive okay so you can grill some toast on this little guy i mean it's going to suck some power we're already down to 74 percent i just want to see if this thing can do a whole super well done toast scenario you know until that toast finishes bear with me now but this is the kind of stuff you want to know with these power stations you know you know you want to know what they really can handle if you take them out camping and being that this one is so portable and so light, this is really impressing me right now. I can't believe it's holding at almost 600 watts for this long. And those coils in there, those buggers are glowing. So if there was toast in there, it would be pretty dang hot. There it goes. Okay, so toaster popped. We're down to 71%. Awesome. So that is really impressive we'll just plug in some of these other items here you know like the ipad and stuff like that we'll just fill up all these usb ports let's plug in a drone say we have a drone i i do think i'll be using these power stations more and more for um, drone charging in the field and something like this is really portable and easy to carry around plugging in the skydio 2 maybe it's already charged enough i don't know oh it looks like it had a fault you see that caution right there? That's weird. Um, let's power off and power back on. That was weird how it had a fault after it was already all done charging. Now let's turn these guys back on. DC rail and the AC rail. Okay. There we go. Now the Skydio is charging. So that fault was weird how it came on afterwards. Now let's fill up the last USB rail with the Skydio controller. And this is the Skydio Beacon. It's that one where it's just like a handheld GPS controller. Charging Beacon. All right. So guys, we're using a total of 40, 36 to 40 watts of power, charging all of these kind of low power peripherals. And that's probably mainly what you're going to use this one for but it's good to know that you can do a regular you know two slot toaster and you can do a blender on this if you wanted to so it is going to kind of outperform its 500 watt i couldn't believe it could do the toast um, but that's it for me on this rock pals 500 watt power station i hope you enjoyed that i hope that was informative to you don't forget to check the links down below in the description on rock pals website where you can get this and they also have higher end models and different solar panels so go ahead and check them out support my channel and also comment in the description and tell me what you thought about this review and uh, if you were also amazed that it could outperform um, its spec output for that toaster anyway guys thanks for tuning in and i will see you in the next one thanks for watching